So this is the seventh launch CMU event, and I think for the first six, when I'd get the initial email that this thing was happening, I would turn around and email Dave and say, great, when are you doing one about science? And so when I got this one, I was like, you know, I think I emailed, I was like, all right, finally. Um, so I'm absolutely honored to be here speaking with you today, and I'm a very proud alum of the Mellon College of Science and incredibly excited about everything that has happened there and will continue to happen there, both um, under Rebecca's leadership and with all of the additional resources for entrepreneurs and startups that CMU now has. So my company, Emerald Cloud Lab, is a remote control life sciences lab. So essentially what it is, is we have a software application that scientists anywhere in the world can use to design experiments like you're standing in front of the instrument yourself. Once you've designed that experiment and submitted it to our system, it get, gets run in our facility, in one of our facilities, using robotics and automation to capture every scientifically relevant aspect of the experiment. When the experiment's done, the data's handed back to you through the same software application, along with a whole suite of tools for analysis, visualization, plotting, basically figuring out what happened in your experiment and deciding what you want to do next. So you can kind of think of this like Amazon Web Services, but for life sciences experiments. The difference, of course, is that there's a huge physical component to this because we're actually running these experiments. So about 20 minutes north of here in South San Francisco, we've converted a, the old South San Francisco Post Office and Postal Sorting Center into our factory for doing science. And unlike a lot, unlike pharmaceutical companies or diagnostics companies, we're not focused on a product. We're not trying to make a drug here. What we're focused on is the process and in running this facility in the most efficient and efficacious way possible such that all of the data that, com that comes out of here has push button reproducibility and we capture every aspect of the data down to like the temperature and humidity in the room when your experiment was running, which you know, usually you don't record because most of the time it doesn't matter until it does. So that's a big part of what we're doing in trying to move science up a layer of, up the abstraction ladder. I mean, that's something that has really characterized every technological industry up till this point, but has sort of left the sciences by the wayside. So if you think about programming languages, when you started, you were basically writing machine code. And now you, there are programming languages where there's not even a concept that you're connected to a processor at any point. Same thing with semiconductors. If you look at what happened from the earliest fabs all the way up to TSMC and the molecular foundry, you're moving up the abstraction layer where now you can be an electrical engineer and never step foot in a fab. So science hasn't really had this happen yet. Right now, whether or not a clinical trial candidate moves forward can come down to like, did I pipette into that well yet or not? And that's a ridiculous place for us to be. So in many ways, what we're trying to do at Emerald is build just the first layer of abstraction so you can start to think about these experiments at a higher level without worrying about the super low level implementation details because we have robotics and automation to take care of that. There are two important factors to, to this business. One is capability and the other is cycle time. So capability means being able to run any experiment that you could do in a normal lab. Our goal is that you should be able to pick up, you know, a paper from science or nature or cell, look at the method section, and then go onto our software and just rerun all of the experiments that they did to get their data. And that means being able to offer every standard in vitro life sciences experiment, which is about 100 or so experiments. So at Emerald, we're about 40% of the way there, and intend on closing that gap over the next 12 to 18 months. The other thing that makes this difficult is cycle time. So being able to turn those experiments around quickly. Our goal is that no experiment should sit and wait to be run for more than 24 hours. So that imposes a lot of restrictions and optimization needed in that facility that you just saw. So it's not 
an unchallenging problem, but we think it's a really important one and have certainly learned a lot of lessons and have a lot of scar tissue along the way that I'm happy to, happy to share and be of service to, uh, be of service to this community through. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, right now, all of this is focused on, not just on startups and academics for whom the, there's something compelling about not having to purchase the equipment, but also big pharma companies where the data capture and the level of detail that you get from experiments when all of the, everything that matters to the science is being handled by robotics is automatically captured without any sort of manual note taking. So that's where we are. We've been at this for uh, almost eight years now, and it's definitely been an uphill battle, but I uh, look forward to continuing the good fight and to talking to all of you. Thanks so much for your time and attention.